Live from Cat's House, it's Bridal Buzz. Okay. <laughs> I'm like nerve sighted, yeah. you know, but more on the excited side. Yeah. And the me nervousness too. is just coming from being excited, I think. So. You guys ready, Bridal Babes? For my first post wedding podcast episode. Ah! <laughs> Um, today we're joined by Elise Walker. Hello. Yes. Elise has already been on the podcast before with her husband. I know we were like thinking maybe Jackson would be on this episode, but to be honest, that's a work in progress. We're all just going to say <laughs> lots of hopes and prayers for that. Yes. Fingers crossed that we'll get him on an episode ever again. Um, love Every him and it's not his fault. It's just not his thing. So yeah. I don't want to make him do something that he doesn't want to do. True. Um, if you ever need a male, Andre, my husband is very much available. Yes. For his, for the podcast opinions. Yes. <laughs> very opinionated. <laughs> oh my gosh. But we're really excited. I don't want to be like getting too much into my wedding all at once. Cause I feel mm. like through answering the stories, answering these questions, like, it's just going to naturally come out. Yeah. I'm not going to be able to help it. Right. And I don't want to sit down and be, like, just talking about my wedding for an hour. Right. So I think it's just going to be more natural and, like, here's what happened to me. So that's that's what I'm planning to do today. But before we get into the post-wedding Reddit stories that we're going to be reading today, Elise, I'd love for you to tell the bridal babes just a little bit about... You and Andre, a little bit about your wedding, which was a, a year ago. Mm -hmm. They're literally mm -hmm. about to go celebrate their one-year anniversary. So exciting. Very, exciting. Um, Very surreal. Yeah. So crazy. Honestly, time flies by so fast. Yeah. But, it does. But yeah. And also, <laughs> cheers. Thank you so yes. much for being my first guest in my home studio. Thank you for having me. I yes. feel very special right now. <laughs> oh. So cheers. we're drinking Live Oak White. This is the white wine I served at my wedding. It's also That's good. Um, made, not made, the winemaker wasn't in the family, but the label that owned this wine owned the wedding that I got married at in Fredericksburg. So it's very special to me, and oh, I'm glad cool. to share it with you. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, for someone who's like a sweet wine drinker. Uh, yeah, um, I'm not a wino. Well, that's not the right word. <laughs> okay, actually, I love the word wino, but my mom was like, no, wino means it, like... It's bad, right? Yeah, it's like a bum on the side of the road drinking wine from a, a paper bum. bag. Like, literally, that's <laughs> like someone who's just like drunk all the time, like an alcoholic. Well, I'm definitely not that. <laughs> but, but I like, mean, like, I'm not a wine person, but like, I like sweet wine. Yeah. Because... I don't know. And this is like kind of like leaning toward those sweeter notes, but it's not yeah. technically a sweet wine. It kind of tricks right. your palate into thinking. I, I feel like a little woody, a little nutty. I don't know if those are the right mm -hmm. words at the end. Yeah. You know? Mm -hmm. On the finish. I like it. Yeah. The finish. <laughs> yeah. But I love this wine. Um, yeah, that's good. Can't really find it anymore in Fredericksburg, but DM me <laughs> if you're looking for the inside scoop. You have I got some. <laughs> Right now we have a case. We're running low on that case, but we might get another case because it's on sale. Anyway. It is good. Tell us about you and Andre back yeah. to <laughs> back to five minutes ago. <laughs> so Andre and I met at Johnson High School in San Antonio, and that was over 10 years ago. So we have been high school sweethearts for 10 years, and... Aww. We were long distance in college. We've been more long distance than we have been together, if that makes sense. <laughs> close distance. Yeah, close <laughs> distance. Um, and we got married in Dripping Springs, which is the wedding capital of Texas. Dum -ba -da -dum. And it was beautiful, and I'm glad we got married there. And we afterwards, we went on a cruise for our honeymoon. And Andre is just such a character. And like through the wedding process, he was very opinionated. Like the stereotype is that guys are like, eh, I'll meet you there, like do whatever you mm -hmm. want. But Andre was like very involved. Which so we love. Yeah, it yeah. was great, but it was also like unexpected a little yes. bit. Yes. And that brings challenges because you're yeah. like, no, I do want you to wear this color. And he's like, actually, no, I'm not gonna wear that color. And you're like, what do you mean, babe? This is my wedding. Like, Yo, you're, oh, I'm getting married oh, to you? Oh, yeah. But, at our wedding, I was yeah. like, oh, yeah. Yeah. But actually, yeah, because Andre did not want to wear black, gray, or navy, which, 
Uh, I'm like, so what are you wearing? Yeah. Then? We played around with green, but then it looked a little bit too military, the, the hmm. tone that we wanted to use. And then we landed on this like cinnamon brown rust orange color and it was perfect. Super nice. So yes. it was it was a bit different than the standard wedding that you might see. So uh, yeah, he was pretty proud of that decision. Aww, That's I'm what glad. He wanted. You yeah. want to look back on that and be like, yeah. That's you, yeah. right? Like, we'll talk a little bit about that today. Cool. When I started looking for post-wedding stories, I was thinking more like, like the month after the wedding, like uh-huh. two months, whatever. But I started finding stories about like, r- like the hours following the wedding too. So hours. we're gonna be spanning from like, what do I do right after my wedding? Like, where do I go? Mm-hmm. To, you know, three months later, looking back, let's talk about what I learned. Type of stories. Gotcha. So we've got a range. Um, I'm really excited. We're gonna learn a lot today. <laughs> we're gonna get deep into what it. And it. <laughs> I'm just glad that we have wine this time because I feel like it's going to help me be a little bit more honest. Okay. Ooh, <laughs> she's been holding back. We're about to I unleash. Mean, yes. <laughs> and so bridal babes, before we get into it, I know I've probably said that already three times, but we're in a new studio. We're literally in my house. Things have changed for bridal buzz. Very exciting changes. I'm so excited. I'm doing this all on my own now. So your support now means more than anything. If you can like, if you can share, if you can subscribe, all of that really impacts me like personally so much. It literally means the world. So all of those things. And with and we're that. Very proud of you. Aw, thanks, Elise. Because you could have just been like, well, you that's know? a wrap. But like <laughs> you're keeping the community. This is what you love to do. Yeah. You literally drive like more than an hour to places to interview people, to be a part of the community. And people know you and appreciate you. So, we we love what you do. Stop. <laughs> it's true. You're making me blush. It's true. Oh, my gosh. Thank you. You're welcome. It's been such a nice feeling to see how the community has responded and supported yeah. me in the last few months that I've been a little bit MIA. But, again, thank you for bearing with me and being patient because I needed it. And now, we're back. Yeah, so we're back. With that, let's get started. What's up, bridal babes? I hope you're ready to talk weddings with me on another exciting episode of your favorite wedding podcast, Bridal Buzz. I'm your host, Kat, and I already introduced Elise, but she's going to be our guest host today on today's episode. And again, we are talking about all things post-wedding. So I'm super excited to dive in. I think let's just go ahead and start with like like right after the wedding. I kind of want to move from micro to macro. Okay, Okay. yeah, right after the wedding. Like you do the exit, Mm -hmm. you get in the car, or the boat. I I saw a boat exit. Literally. With fireworks Mm -hmm. in the back. I think I know what venue you're talking about. Yeah, Mm -hmm. yeah, you do. Amazing. Yes. I was like, um, why didn't I have a boat in a lake to cross? I recently (laughs) saw a a helicopter get away. I was like... I've never even been in a helicopter, so I would yeah. be, like, dying of anxiety. But Maybe not for yeah. us, but I didn't cool. do one for a reason. <laughs> I actually, funny story before we read this, I thought I was going to just use a golf cart on site because I was like, I don't want to spend money renting a yeah. getaway car, and, like, I drive a beat-up Mazda. Like, that's not sexy. The golf cart isn't either, but at least it's, like, not my beat up Mazda. That's, golf cart is cute. Yeah, and like we could decorate it a little bit. Yeah. Turns out, I don't have like the authority to drive this, and oh. I, like it was just too much to ask my wedding planner to be the driver to get me to the house that we were staying at on property. Thank God, one of my mom's cousins ended up driving. He's like a classic car collector. He oh. drove one of his classics to the wedding, like not thinking about any of that, just uh-huh. probably because he wanted to drive through the hills like, yeah. in the wine country through, with a good car. That's nice. Um, and I was like, Scott, my guy, <laughs> my cousin, can you drive me to my house? It would be great. <laughs> not my house, actually, but the house on the property. Ended up being perfect. We got That's these cute nice. little vintage car pictures at the end of the night. Some of my favorite pictures from the whole night. Oh, what a person to know. A classic car collector. Yeah. Like, yeah, he, I yeah. would like to know you. He also painted <laughs> flames on the hood of my grandpa's old pickup truck. Oh, that's Like, cool. just a really 
Outstanding. What a cool guy. Texas guy. Shout out. Yeah. So <laughs> shout out to Scott. Literally didn't even know how much he was coming in clutch that day. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But he did. So anyway. I like that. Very cool. This is from the wedding subreddit. And the title is, what did you do directly after your wedding? Let's hear it. I'm curious what everyone did after their final send off. Our reception will end around 10 p.m. on a Saturday, and we are only serving wine and beer. We have out-of-town wedding party members staying near our house. I'm wondering if drinks at a bar after we get back in, into normal clothes is totally out of the question. That's it. Out of the question. <laughs> it is not even a question. Yeah. Of course you're going to the bar yeah. after. Yeah. <laughs> what do you mean? Of course. Like, if that was it. your first instinct, for sure. Yeah. Don't fight that. And everybody wants to, like she said, change and then, like, relax and, mm-hmm. like, because sometimes weddings you feel like you need to be a little bit sophisticated, depending on what, what kind of wedding you have. But, mm-hmm. you know, a little, like, dressed up. Yeah. And so at a bar in a different pair of clothes, like, it's going to be even more fun. Yes. With, especially with close family friends. Yeah. I think if you're in the town that you're, like, most of the people are from, too, or they're staying near our house. Yeah. yeah. So, we'd, like, it's, it's the area you're from. People can go back home. They can change. And if it's 10 p.m., I mean, that's, like, three hours, four hours at the bar. Yeah, like, that's when the party starts. Yeah. It's 10. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's the after party that we've all been waiting for. Yeah. Um, and that's what I did, too, but not as, I guess, uh, casual. Like, it wasn't my hometown or anything. Um, we had a party bus pick up our guests from two hotels, and then we drove to 6th Street, downtown Austin. And we were 30 deep. So we like came off the bus and on Sixth Street, all you see is a horde of people, just a big group of people, and Straight me and Andre. From the yeah, me yeah. and Andre in the front, and some people changed because they went back to the hotels, but some people were, you know, still dressed nice, and we had matching outfits, and it was awesome. It was like we were coming in deep, and people, you know, they didn't stay with us the whole time. Like they went to the bars that they were interested in, and yeah, people had a great time. Yeah. So we did something similar. But. Yeah. I wish I would have put more thought into what we were doing after. Yeah. Because it was like, oh, okay, we'll just have an after party. But, like, Mm -hmm. where? How? Right. What is being provided? How are we playing music? All of these details. And I had late night street tacos served by my catering company. But at the end of the reception. Yeah. And, like, literally two hours. Yeah. Two hours into the reception, my dad's like, we should pay the DJ to stay extra and I'm like go dad (laughs) love that idea dad I'm also feeling that yeah it just goes by so fast it really does and that is like I think the number one reason to do this I don't care how tired my body actually was I was like ready to I literally stayed up till five in the morning the night of my wedding so and the night before (laughs) I literally got like maybe six hours of sleep total over the three days that I was celebrating my Girl, wedding. Girl, I could not. I need my eight hours of sleep. I <laughs> slept for, I think, two and a half days after. <laughs> it was all right, said and done. Right, But so glad I did the after party. Just wish I would have been like OP here. Actually thought about it ahead of time. Right. Um, because it does make a difference when there's these thought out details. Because we were up at 3.30 in the morning thinking like, wow, I wish we had more food right half the people didn't even eat the tacos because they were served an hour and a half after our dinner ended right so it was like if we would have waited till midnight to serve those tacos at the after party i think they would have been better yeah s- people would be a little bit more hype like yeah. tacos. i mean people were <laughs> effed up at the end of the night like there's my family's colombian and so we had agua diente mm-hmm. which is like a, a liquor that you drink straight you don't i mean you could mix it with coca-cola but like traditionally you're like taking shots it's like a party drink (laughs) and so yeah that alone which was off the menu not even like being served at the wedding ooh, exclusive set everybody up for a very interesting evening fun best man went missing at some point missing Um, yeah one of our wedding guests ended up throwing up in one of the cabins um, oh. it was, you know, all worth it though. Yeah. So a story to tell for sure. Yeah. And I think I, I, again, like whatever you want to do after your wedding, do it. Like if you want to mm-hmm. invite everybody over to watch a movie and eat some pizza and just mm-hmm. like unwind in that kind of way, yeah, do it. If you want to like 
do a midnight swim at your Airbnb. Ooh. That sounds really refreshing in this Texas heat right now. Low I key. love that idea. Right? And so. some people trash the dress and they jump into mm-hmm. the pool with the dress. You could do that. Literally, the world's your oyster. DIFY. Do it for you. Boo. I like that. Um, and the top comment says, People actually thought it was weird that we didn't go out after our wedding, but we were personally just so tired and hadn't been alone for more than five minutes the entire day, so we were beat. Mm -hmm. And that's totally fair, too. Again, to each their own. You might think that you want to have an after party and go till four in the morning, and then day of, you're actually so exhausted you can't even open your eyes. So listen to your body as well. Your wedding guests will go on and have, you know, fun without you. Don't have FOMO. It's okay. Like, you brought these people together. If you need to go to bed, go to bed. Yeah. Agree. But if you need to go to the bar, go to the bar. (laughs) (laughs) So, okay. Next story. Next story. Let's see, like, timeline-wise. Okay. Next story from the wedding subreddit. Title is Post-Wedding Breakfast. Hi, our venue has enough accommodation for everyone to stay over if they want to. So far, about half of our guests who have RSVP'd are going to. We don't plan to charge people because the venue, including accommodation, is within our venue budget. However, we think it would be a nice gesture to serve breakfast in the morning, which will be by cash donation. Not expecting huge amounts of money, $10 or so per person, and we won't be keeping track of whether or not someone actually gives anything. However, we obviously don't want the breakfast to become its own hassle. We're trying to think of something simple that will still provide sustenance for a good amount of people. I imagine we could end up with at least 80 people for our breakfast, currently sitting around 50 staying over. We'll have access to a good kitchen, but would prefer that it's something that could be made ahead and is one step from cold cereal, which we will also have available. If anyone has done something similar and has any ideas for simple but tasty options, let me know. So there's a couple things here. Yeah. Um, I think... (laughs) <laughs> I'm like, I kind of want to get your thoughts on it before I start talking. Um, but the first thing that stands out to me is charging wedding guests to do something. Mm-hmm. And um, only like serving something that's just one step above cold cereal. Yeah. So you could go two ways. I think in this instance, you're either going to go out out and like offer a breakfast Mm -hmm. with perhaps the caterer that you used for your wedding or say hey come on over we're gonna have chick-fil-a breakfast catering like pick one because if you say it's a cater breakfast i'm thinking eggs bacon sausage fruit Mm -hmm. toast pancake like i'm a continental breakfast i'm expecting a buffet kind of thing but if it's more like, oh, hey, yeah, we're going to be having a little something af- in the morning, like, you know, set mm-hmm. expectations. And then with the cash, I'm like, okay, what if only one person donates, which probably wouldn't be the case. But it's like you're hoping that you're going to get some of this paid yeah. for, but I don't, I don't know. That, I don't yeah. know about that. Yeah, I think it's a weird place to put yourself in and your yeah. wedding guests. Like, it's going to be uncomfortable for everybody. Mm-hmm. And maybe OP is not thinking about that. Maybe they're not feeling uncomfortable about the situation. But it's also like, sometimes you think it's a good idea. And then after you're like, oh, ooh. And you uh." know what I just thought of? Okay, so you and I pay, right? And then 40 other people don't pay. Mm. And you're like, what did I pay for? Do I get an extra muffin? Yeah, right. Like, why am I paying? But (laughs) it's optional, so not everybody pays, you know? Mm -hmm. That's going to get a little... I would just say pay for it. Yeah. I would say pay for it. Yeah. Yeah. Like, if you're going to have the breakfast... Have the breakfast. Yeah. And you're... At the end of the day, you're the host of the wedding. Mm -hmm. And you're already asking your guests to travel there. You know, they might be spending money on rental cars. They might be spending money on childcare dog care, whatever, just to be there, even if they're not paying for their room directly, um, it still is a sacrifice for them to be there. Yeah. And then saying, oh, on top of that, would you mind paying $10 for oatmeal? Thank you. And then they're also most likely giving you a gift or a cash yeah. donation for your wedding. And um, I don't really don't know if 10 bucks is going to go far if, let's say, half of the 50 give you 10 bucks. Mm-hmm. I'm like, eh. 
it, like it'll help a little, but yeah. it's not going to cover a full catering for 50 no. or 80 people. No, you're not going to get like freshly baked food yeah. for that. I If they want to save money, go do Chick-fil-A breakfast catering, yeah. do, or whatever is near you, something local and maybe yeah. not as expensive. I'm thinking like Costco maybe has like some yeah. pre-made quiches or something. You can just pop yeah. in an oven and cut up and serve to people. Right, exactly. But still, I wouldn't charge, I would not ask my wedding guests to give no. me money for that. No. It's I just agree. one of those things that at the end of the day, I would rather ser- save money on something else. Yes. You know? Yes. But I, also, yeah. like, I think I'm, my priorities in my wedding were guest experience. Mm-hmm. So I, I would not want to make my guests feel like they have to pay for something mm-hmm. in order to be there. Um, but I, I did do a brunch. Oh, it you was, did? Yeah. And it was so great. By the end of it, though, I was like, dying um because I was running on six hours of sleep and so we had like an omelet bar and sausage Mm -hmm. and you know like freshly baked goods and things like that and it was definitely worth it um it was a perfect way to be able to say goodbye to all the people that had came because Mm -hmm. it was like not everybody stayed for the after party at my wedding right really hard to be able to get that like final goodbye Mm -hmm. at the actual wedding because you're walking out and then you're getting in a car and leaving or getting in a helicopter depending on who you are um (laughs) and so that goodbye brunch and I don't even oh it is post-wedding okay I was like is this the morning of or no morning after so Mm -hmm. this is I think it's totally worth it to spend I mean you might have to spend like a thousand dollars to have good food available Mm -hmm. um unless you have somebody that can make it if you have a family member who's willing to make a huge amount of eggs a huge amount of bacon and just like have that available for people Mm -hmm. that would be an easy way to save money in this situation too it just depends on your priority your resources and i think it can be hosted by someone because you know how sometimes an engagement party or a bridal shower is hosted by the maid of honor or the aunt or maybe like you know those people who are always like let me know if you need anything Mm -hmm. and they really want to be a part of it Mm -hmm. but you really don't need their help this is the time to use them say hey do you want to host my breakfast or like donate toward it like ask that one person who you know wants to give 200 500 dollars toward helping you yeah that's a great idea And like you said, this is a great opportunity to say goodbye to people because that is the one thing I kind of look back on is that during my wedding, I, we didn't go around to tables. We didn't have a, uh, what's it called? A, when, in a line when people come to you after the ceremony and they shake your hand and they hug you. A receiving line. Oh, Three years in, never heard of that. <laughs> really? Yeah, no. Yeah, so very, very, very traditional. Oh. So a receiving line is you walk back down the aisle and you, usually you stand outside of the church or in the lobby of the church or whatever venue you're at. And as people come out, they come and they shake your hand, take a picture, and then leave. So oh. I didn't do a receiving line. Um, I, I didn't walk around to the tables. And I do regret not walking around to the tables um, but we were really focused on dancing. <laughs> yeah. So it, it was more, I would, I was expecting people to come to us, but people were like, oh, I don't dance. And so they really yeah. just sat there. And like, oh, I don't want to bother the bride. Like, yeah. I'm like, yeah. no, bother me. Mm-hmm. Like, that's why you're here. So bother I actually, me. I actually didn't see <laughs> some people. Like, I saw them, but I didn't talk to them at yeah. my wedding because they didn't come up to me. Yeah. And I'm like, should I have come up to them? But also it's my responsibility. I don't know. So much going on. It's such <laughs> a short day. It's short. Yes. It's so hard. Four hour reception. Literally, and like half of that is sitting down, eating dinner, doing toasts. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. Yeah. It goes by so fast. So this is a great way to say goodbye to people because maybe you didn't have time. Mm-hmm. And like you said, you were really tired. I don't think I would have done if I did it all over again. I don't think I would have done a post-breakfast because we woke up, took a took a, a COVID test, <laughs> and then we went on a cruise ship. So we, The next day. Yeah. Wow. We, or we flew to Florida, and then we got on a cruise ship. But it was very busy. But it, even if we didn't do that, I woke up like, <gasps> like I was Literally. Done. Yeah. So Exhaustion. I've never felt it like that yeah. before. It's insane. <laughs> so if they have the time and they really want to say goodbye to people, pay for the breakfast. Yeah. Just pay for the breakfast. Yeah. So the top comment on here says, do not ask for donations. Either host a breakfast or tell everyone that you and your new spouse will be having a breakfast in the dining room at X time and they are welcome to stop by. I love that. I think that's also a great solution. 
Like if there's, you know, a big open space, um, I'm thinking Cosmic Coffee and Beer Mm -hmm. in Austin has a bunch of food trucks and a great amount of picnic tables that people can sit down at. So there's a variety of food, there's good coffee, you know, some mimosas if you want to get into that. Um, And that is like a great alternative to... Mm -hmm having renting a venue for another day, but their venue is already paid for. But in anyone else's situation, renting a venue, paying for catering, you know, all the decor and everything else that goes into it. That's a great alternative. Um, my cousin went to IHOP. She was like, me and the groom will be at IHOP at this time. Pull through. And we did. <laughs> pull through. <laughs> Come to IHOP. <laughs> Come through. I love that. <laughs> Someone said, if I'm donating $10 for a breakfast, I'd rather go to a breakfast place and be served. Yep. <laughs> Savage. Agreed. I mean, that's how much a plate is, $10, $15 for mm-hmm. breakfast in this day and age. So I feel like we gave our a good amount of two cents on that. For sure. Like maybe even like eight cents. That was a lot. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so kind of piggybacking off of the fact that you left for your honeymoon the next day. Mm-hmm. This story, also from the wedding subreddit, (laughs) weird, is titled Post-Wedding Exhaustion. So, we got married this past Saturday. It's now Wednesday, and we are so exhausted still. Here to say, if you aren't going away right after, we aren't. Take a few days off. I did. Because after all that stress, your body needs to decompress. Took us by surprise just how run down we feel, and perhaps a bit of post-wedding blues because it was such an exhilarating day. Take care of yourself and each other. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So coming from a... We have different perspectives because Mm -hmm. I waited like five days Mm -hmm. to go on my honeymoon. You went on yours the next day. Mm -hmm. So kind of talk to me and the bridal babes out there listening about how that like impacted your time. Like, it might have not impacted it negatively at all. Um, I'm just wondering because we have two different perspectives here, two different experiences, so that's good. Yeah, going on the honeymoon or flying to the honeymoon the day after, it was tiring, but it was, like, relaxing in a way that, like, I'm physically leaving the place of stress if that makes Mm -hmm. sense like it's like bye like Mm -hmm. anything that's going on that is not my problem (laughs) like getting on a plane and leaving so some people traveling is tiring but for us it's exhilarating Mm. because we're we love to travel but feed off of it yeah yeah so for us it's super exciting for others it may be like oh I have to go to an airport or oh I have to drive like for us we're like let's go (laughs) so uh I if if we didn't have gone, I think I would have been needing a couple of days for sure. I've heard people of like, I have my wedding on a Saturday and then I'm going to work on Monday. And I'm like, um, you could take more than one day off because the day after maybe you're uh, returning rentals or driving things back home yes. or uh, getting your dress steam or whatever. Mm-hmm. Still have some family lingering. And, family. Mm-hmm. And then the post breakfast. Mm-hmm. So you really need the next day as a rest day. The day after really isn't a rest day. No. Agreed. It's a travel day. It's a pick up your mess day. Yeah. It's <laughs> so clean up. It's really it's not deep a rest clean. day. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Deep cleaning. Yeah. It's the everything shower day. You know? <laughs> yeah. yeah. So you guys were on a cruise. Like mm-hmm. what an amazing way to unwind Mm -hmm. and like you said not having to be in the space that you were doing all of your wedding planning having all these responsibilities like you were able to just like check it out and move on for a little bit before going like straight back to reality yeah yeah so I think for Jackson and I I mean I'm glad we didn't go at least the day after the wedding because I would have been like an asparagus like I don't even know what I mean by Not that an asparagus <laughs> but I would have been stinky and stiff and just not a happy camper um because I needed that sleep after only getting six hours yeah um and all of the like highs and lows emotionally of what that weekend was for us like I still, even like a week later on the honeymoon, had one day where I was like about to start my period and just feeling all of my emotions and was like 
just like needing to talk about things from the wedding that went wrong. And it's yeah. like, oh, I wish I didn't have to be in this headspace. But like she said, like, or they, I, you know, you have these post-wedding blues that pop up. It, you don't know what's going to happen. I'm glad Jackson took time off from work that week, too, mm -hmm. um, so that we could have that down, downtime together. Um, I agree. Like, it would have been nice to just step away from everything for a second, though, because mm -hmm. I was, like, cleaning up, you know, putting my wedding box together, doing all of these things that, like, I still had to think about. Yeah, yeah, I was still, like, not, I still feel like I'm not done with the wedding because there's <laughs> things that just keep popping up. And, um, then, and then after the wedding, you got to say, you got to send thank you cards. Yes. Oh, BT dubs, you have one more thing to do. <laughs> and you have to do reviews. And it hurts. Like, <laughs> physically. Hurts? My wrist hurts so bad. Oh, it's like, to say thank you. <laughs> it hurts. Being thankful is painful. No, I, I literally had to write them at like five at a time or something because my oh. hand would just start cramping. Oh. I, I don't write anymore. I hot, type, you, you know? You so want that, a hot take? What? I didn't send thank you cards. <laughs> Did you send messages? Anything? I gave a thank you speech at my wedding. <laughs> Were you I, listening? I said thank you. I mean, and then and then July, August, September, October, November, and then five months later, I sent Christmas cards. There you go. And it was a picture from our wedding. <laughs> I mean, I said thank you at the wedding. I wrote okay. paragraphs to people who sent us things. That well, that is very That's nice. why my wrist hurt, though, for sure. <laughs> I didn't write anything. <laughs> well, you know what? It's okay. And it's not because I'm not grateful, thankful. Thankful. <laughs> <laughs> thankful. It's, it's not because I'm not grateful or thankful. It's just another expense. Like, yes. Could you yeah. give me a break? Yeah. And then you got to buy stamps. Stamps are not expensive, <laughs> but it's an expense. But they add up when you have to send 150 uh -huh. or so cards. They that's, sure do. I don't know the math. That's money. Yeah. You know? <laughs> that's 25 bills. cents a stamp. <laughs> Crazy. So, yeah. You don't have to send thank you cards. No, you don't. You, you could don't just do anything. make a generic one on paperless <laughs> post or something. Mm -hmm. Say fill in the blank with the name. Yeah. Boom. I mean, yeah, That's to, smart. to each their own. That. Yeah, you still <laughs> can. <Still nuts. laughs> You're almost at that one-year mark. It's not too late. <laughs> right. Like, I could, like, pose it as, like, hey. Oh, my God, I thought I sent this last year. Or, no, Sorry. like, it's been a year. We want to thank you for joining in our day. We still yeah, think fondly actually, of though, it. Yeah, actually, though, thank you again. Maybe they'll they'll be like, yeah, she did send me a thank you card. Yeah, thank you again. Yeah. Like, it'll be like a Berenstein Bears situation. <laughs> Um, speaking of thank you cards, good transition, Elise. This one is titled, when is it too late to send thank you notes? A year out. <laughs> A year after. <laughs> That's the hard stop. I got married earlier this week and still haven't sent thank you notes. <laughs> Stressing about a oh, week after. Here I am, like, oh, ah, they don't need a thank you. Oh my gosh. Oh, like I said, thank oh. you in my speech. She's like, it's been seven days. <laughs> Not even. What will people think of me? And I'm like, <laughs> nah. <laughs> oh, my oh my gosh. And I got a thank you note from my friend's wedding, and I was like, ooh, I should have done that. <laughs> no. Like, you don't have to do anything. You just don't. You don't have to do anything. That's the rule of weddings. Oh, she is so sweet. Okay, so I got married earlier this week and still haven't sent thank you notes, which is something I really wanted to do. We got our photos back four months after the wedding, and then... Wait. Maybe she meant year? Earlier this year? Because I'm like, wait. At what point are you writing this? You got married earlier this week. Got our photos back four she months after the wedding. She meant year, right? I think she meant year. Because that doesn't make sense. Year. I think she meant year. Hmm. Six months? Yeah. So, do yeah. You think so? Okay. Way too late? No, I don't. Typo. Typo. <clears throat> okay. <laughs> this is like, this, this sweet lady is worried oh, yeah, about a week. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I got married earlier this year and still haven't sent thank you notes, which is something I really wanted to do. We got our photos back four months after the wedding, and then life got in the way, and we haven't even fully gone through them, let alone pick out one to use for thank you notes. 
Do you think six to seven months is way too late to send thank you notes? Or do you think it's still a nice gesture? I'd really like to do it, but also don't want to seem too weird. So based off of our conversation we just had, I think you can send thank you notes whenever. I think it might even be a cute gesture to send them six months out, a year out, and say, mm -hmm. you know, it's been a minute. You know, just wanted to circle back and say thank you for being there. Thank you for supporting us in this next step in our life. Um, also, you, like, don't have to use a picture from your wedding. If that yeah. adds a lot of extra pressure to you sending a thank you card. And that's why she waited to send them. It sounds like... It does take a minimum two months yeah. to four months to get wedding pictures mm -hmm. back. And I think most people understand that nowadays. Yeah. So I don't think they're like, mm, they didn't send a thank you card. Yeah. I'm waiting for it. Like, Linda's just sitting in her rocker looking for the mailman. <laughs> and you know what? You could... if photos are really important to her. I think I thought about doing this, but I didn't end up doing it. But if you take pictures of people with people at your wedding, printing that picture out and sending it to them as yeah. a thank you. Yeah. Because yeah, you can send it through text, but it's nice to get a little like, you know, a real yeah, a physical photo. photo. Yeah. I actually did think about because on my save the dates, I used um, pull like Polaroid printouts oh, and attach that to the the note instead of getting it printed directly on the note. Mm -hmm. And I thought about continuing that theme into the yeah. thank you cards, but I was like, oh, it's just so much. Like, it is. Um, but it would have been nice to send it to like certain people who mm -hmm. we had photos of. Yeah. It's not, not too late. It's never too late. I could still send stuff to them. <laughs> I can't. <laughs> I don't know if I will, but it's a good idea. Okay. So consensus. It's not too late. It's never too late. It's never too late. <laughs> <laughs> Even if I say it'll be all right. Never is never too late. I don't know the rest of the words of that song. But top comment, I say this in the kindest way possible. Your guests don't care about getting a picture from your wedding unless they're in it. Facts. Uh, get those notes out now without the picture. Now. Now. <laughs> now. <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna go home today and be like, Andre, we, we need to send thank you notes. <laughs> nah. <laughs> uh, that's the thing. I'm like, are you gonna help me write them? No. I mean, I don't want your handwriting in them. No offense. Love you, Jackson. <laughs> What's but boys in handwriting? Uh, some of them have really great handwriting, but I've never met. I've never met a boy with really no. <laughs> I've met a couple, I've and never. it's like, oh, you I feel like they're know. almost like subconsciously like don't want to have good handwriting. You know why? I know why. Why? Because back in the olden days, it was like <laughs> women should have beautiful penmanship and cursive. And was that taught to boys? No, probably not. Yeah, no, right. it's like like oh, in the girls' school, they're like, oh, you yes. need to be what? <laughs> no, you need to be better. Because, <laughs> because women are the ones to write the the invitations and the menu and da da da. And the thank you notes. And the thank you notes. Still, <laughs> down with the patriarchy. I should have had Jackson write half of them and said, so I don't care if you can read it. He, we're saying thank you. And see, <laughs> he wouldn't have done it. Like, he would have just been like, whatever. Like, I just won't do it then. He'd like, be like, sure, sure, yeah. Like, there's no there's no pressure for guys to send thank yeah. you notes. Everybody knows it's the girl who who buys the Christmas yeah. gifts, who writes the note, and then signs the husband's name at the I end. said Kat and Jackson. <laughs> <laughs> like, he had anything to do with what I wrote. If you get anything from us, it's from me. Yep, so... <laughs> We love our husbands. We do. Yeah. We just some, we have our strengths and we have our weaknesses. You know, it's true. Okay, I loved this one Ooh. because it's like because I loved it. <laughs> Hot take. <laughs> she loved it. <laughs> I loved it because I loved it. Okay, fair enough. Title: Do you actually hang up wedding souvenirs at home after the wedding? Your neon signs, your bouquet, pics. What is displayed at your house after y'all said I do? Did you post all your pics online? Did you put your wedding pic on the mantle? Is your save the date magnet still on your fridge? If you've been married a minute, are those things still up or when did you take them down? Never. So personally, I haven't gotten any of my wedding pictures printed, but I do have our last name, yeah. neon sign, the Ayers, yeah. that we had hanging at our sweetheart table, hanging in like our dining room area. 
Um, we had to last minute buy a runner for our sweetheart table mm. that I'm using on my dining room table. Oh, that's nice. Um, what else? What else do we have? I didn't preserve my bouquet. <gasps> I actually threw it and gave it to somebody. Screaming, yeah. crying, I mean, up. It's just what I wanted to do. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I'm get, a flower girl. Yeah, I, I mean, I am too. I just, I didn't really want to keep it. So I'm not, I won't get into it too much. Um, but it made someone else really, really happy to have it. Um, actually, the them. girl who caught my bouquet. <laughs> I am not an athlete, y'all. Me. So I did not throw it hard or far enough whatsoever. Um, and if it would not have been for this girl, it would have crashed on the floor. Oh, so she died. She, she, she jumped for it. She died. And everyone else like stayed in place. So all of the pictures are her just like yeah. reaching for it. And like after she was so embarrassed to find out that she was the only one that like actually like went for it. And she got it. You she work got it. hard and you get what you want. There you go. <laughs> you get what you work for. So, I uh, preserved my bouquet. It's very expensive. Yes. Um, didn't know that. My mm -hmm. mom gifted it to me, thankfully. Wow. Thanks, mom. Because I love flowers. I love bouquets. I love my bouquet. And um, it was a lady who was based out of the city that I got married in. So, that was really Aww. easy pickup. Yeah. I didn't have to mail anything. I say, find somebody local because your flowers are just going to be fresher. Yes. Um, that way. And then... And they have more time. Like, there's some people who are really popular online, but it's yeah. like, we're fully booked for the next two years. Yeah. I'm like, okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> what See about you me? next time. <laughs> yeah. So, I preserved my bouquet, and I got it framed, and that's in our bedroom. And then, actually, for our one-year anniversary gift, I'm gifting Andre something on paper because your one year anniversary is your paper anniversary. Okay. Did you know that there is a gift associated with every single year that you're married? I knew something about like gold and silver, yeah. but I didn't know about yeah. any of the in-betweens. Brides has a huge article on it and I like have planned what I'm going to gift Andre for the next for five years. Stop. <laughs> I'm just a planner like that. Oh my God. But, um, so... Our one year anniversary is the paper anniversary and I'm gifting Andre a printed, I'll show you, but a printed uh, frame and on the left side it has our first dance lyrics in pretty cursive and on the right side is a stunning black and white photo of us Aww. like looking into each other's eyes. So I love that. That is going to be hanged in our bedroom next to my bouquet. So it goes, Aww. yeah. See, yeah, it's little things like that. Like, I'm pretty sure my officiant is working on, or she said she was going to make me something for our vows. Because we didn't oh. write our own vows, but we found vows online that were, okay. like, really yeah. resonant with us. Yeah. Don't even remember them now. But uh, if I had them <laughs> written out and hanging on my wall, yeah. I would definitely remember them more. It's a nice reminder. Jackson, just disregard the fact that I don't remember our vows. It's fine. Uh, yeah. It doesn't mean I don't respect them or acknowledge them. I just, they're subconscious at this point. You want to know about our vows? Yeah. Andre and I did not do vows in front of everybody at our at ceremony. All? At all. Wow. Well, do you take this man? Yeah. I do, I do. Yeah. But we did, we wrote our own vows on our iPhone notes and we were together the night before the wedding. We have lived together. There was no reason for us to be separated. So we slept <laughs> in the same hotel room, the yes, same bed the night too. before. I love that. And then we woke up turned to get our phones and in bed said our vows together on our notes Aww. and that might sound really unromantic but it actually was very romantic because we were both sobbing Aww. and like you get to cuddle and like literally face to face like read each other's vows and it was it was the best that so is so sweet it's on our phone notes so i bought vow books and am handwriting our vows in the book so we have something Aww. tangible something that we can hold and read and not have to dig through notes to find. I love that. So. I also got us vow books and they have nothing in them. Yeah, it's we were just like, for the pictures. Yeah, well, we were thinking about <laughs> doing like a personal exchange. Yeah. Um, like when we did our first look together before mm -hmm. the ceremony, mm -hmm. we just didn't get around to writing mm. yeah. anything to each other. Yeah. So I'm like, you know, maybe you talking about it right now. I'm like, maybe we could like every year for our anniversary, write a little note in our vow books for Aww. each other and be like this year... Yeah. This is what I'm vowing. 
Because it's such a big book. It's like, why do they have idea. 50 pages? They do. Why? It just needs to be one page. Maybe <laughs> up to five, you know? Yeah, like, five. Okay. It's just a really big book for one set of vows. Some people have the scrolls, and they go like this, and yeah. the scroll comes out. The I Maid think of that's Honor funny. speech. That's so <laughs> funny. So, yeah, I think, like, to each their own. I personally did not get any live wedding painting or, like, that kind of stuff done. I had a family gift me one, so now it's hanging in my bathroom. And, yeah. Um, you know what? Some people think wedding decorations are chuggy, and that's okay for you to think it's chuggy. But nowadays, there are so many vendors, so many artists yes. that you can, if you really, like me, really love your bouquet or really love something about your wedding, you can make it modern and cool mm -hmm. in your style. Mm -hmm. So you don't have to think it's some, like, like people have, back in the 2000s, wow, we we're in the 2020s? <laughs> Whoa. Yes. Whoa. Okay. Back We're in, in our <laughs> mid-20s. Who are we? What are we doing? <laughs> back in the 2000s, people would have like the wooden Mr. and Mrs. like put yes. on their table. Mm -hmm. That was very popular and they would keep it at home. Like, it is, that's not your thing. You don't on, have like, to do that. On like the collage that. frames with a thousand yes. photos from the wedding. Yeah. And, you don't yeah. have to do that. No. You can have a really sleek like coffee table book mm -hmm. of your wedding photos. Like, yeah. Like, that still counts, I think. Yeah. I'm definitely looking forward, like you were doing with the black and white, to printing some of our black and white photos. Because yeah. I think those are just, like, classic and stunning. And there might be something in color that I want to print, but, like, I'm imagining a lot of the detail shots. Right. And, like, a picture of my venue, like, in black and white. Just, like, not me and Jackson all over the place. I just realized I'm not wearing my engagement or wedding ring right now. Shame. 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 <laughs> I was doing the dishes and I forgot to put them on. You know what? Oh. I was about to leave my house and I said, I'm recording a podcast about weddings. Let me turn yeah. around and get my Hello. Ring. How embarrassing. <laughs> you can see the tan line though. So you know I am married. You know it's real. <laughs> I am for sure 100% married. The county of Comal signed the deal they made sure it happened sent me back the thing and it's official so i'm actually for sure married it's Come not a joke County. yeah wow um i have adhd okay that's crazy <laughs> and i was thinking about it like oh how funny would it be if i forget to put on my rings very funny <laughs> manifesting my worst destiny um yeah i love the idea of fun little homages you could even have, like, just, like, if you had one favorite flower from your wedding bouquet, you could find, like, a print of that flower or mm -hmm. have somebody paint just that one flower. Like, it doesn't have to be so specific and so exact. Yeah. Like, it can be as modern, as artistic, as traditional. Like, any way you want to lean with it, it's up to you. This is your house, your wedding, however you want to remember it. Do it. If it doesn't feel right to you, don't do it. There, there's a TikTok where the couple is very into like abstract art, mm -hmm. and there was a photo uh, from their wedding of them like dancing, but they they uh, zoomed into the part of like her dress moving, so mm -hmm. they blew it up and it just looks like a big like movement. Love that texture and movement. Yeah, and in a in a photo, and you could not tell what it is at all that wow. it's a wedding dress or that they're dancing. It's just like movement on the on the canvas and I was like huh okay like you can get as crazy as you want wow I'm gonna pour myself a little bit more wine <laughs> this is fun this is fun we should do this more often mm -hmm. <laughs> I gonna be a regular quarterly <laughs> drop-ins from Elise <laughs> at the end of each fiscal quarter she stops in making sure I'm doing okay okay <laughs> sorry anyway uh. <clears throat> okay, so this is a question actually from a wedding guest. Ooh. So it's titled, Brides, how would you feel about guests purchasing additional registry gifts after the wedding? Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let me stop you right there. You want to get me something? Do it. Okay, so rest of the post. So, the wedding already happened. Yay! And out of curiosity, I wanted to see what my friend still needed that wasn't purchased from her registry. I noticed that there are a lot of small dollar items, 15 to 20 dollars, still not purchased. And some items that were originally around 75 are currently discounted for 30. I was thinking of just buying several of the discounted items for my friend because they're amazing deals for Crate and Barrel. 
brides, would you feel okay if a guest purchased additional items off the registry after the wedding? And I was also curious if my friend would know how much I spent as I don't want her to get uncomfortable thinking I spent several hundreds of dollars. Do you get notified how much each person spends from the registry? I just want the purchases to be a surprise without asking her beforehand. I just want to order and have them sent directly to her without any fuss. Um, nicest person award. Yeah. You should, I wish you came to my wedding. Yeah. You can <laughs> buy me things. <laughs> Let me send you my registry link. <laughs> it's just a cash fund at this point, actually. But Money? You can give me cash. <laughs> this is really, really sweet yeah. for her to even. I, I think her issue is is that she doesn't want the couple to be like, no, they she's spending too much on me. Yeah. And like, no, 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 no. no. Like overly gracious. Right. Yes. And my experience, I did get an email when someone bought something, mm -hmm. but I was just like, oh, somebody bought something. I wasn't worried if they spent a lot of money or not. Yeah. And people will gift you what they want to gift you. Mm -hmm. So she could only buy a, a $20 gift and that's wonderful. Or she could buy the whole lot. So for me personally, I, I could see everything that I was getting from people, mm -hmm. right? I could see how much they were sending. I used Zola. I used the knot. Okay. So I think both of these services are going to show the couple the price of the gift and also give them the opportunity to transfer the money to a cash fund instead of getting the gift themselves. Uh, so these are things to take into consideration as a wedding guest or somebody buying a gift off of a registry. Um, and I don't know, like you're thinking may maybe there's no limit. For me, yeah. I would say and maybe it's just because I'm self-conscious about this kind of thing too. Like I would hate to feel like I over gifted and they were like, Oh, this is weird. Like you gave me so much money. Like you must really love me. Like <laughs> you must be obsessed with me. I don't even think that. <laughs> like if I gave you money, you'd be like, thanks. Yeah. True. <laughs> See people getting too much in their head. It's yeah, okay. No, just people, give the gift. It's really easy to get in your head as yeah. a wedding guest. What do I wear? What time do I get there? What do I give them? How much yeah. is appropriate? It's so easy to get in your head about all of these things in wedding mm -hmm. planning and hopefully listening to these podcasts will help you understand it's not so serious, you know? Like, it's going to be okay whether you get them a $30 gift mm -hmm. or a $300 gift. Mm -hmm. Like, the impact will be there. Like, if somebody gives you hundreds of dollars worth of gifts, you're going to be, like, extra thankful. Yeah. <laughs> like, no offense to the people who got the $30 gift, but... You recognize like the work that it took for that three hundred dollars to be available for you, yeah. And so it means a lot. And so I think it comes down to the relationship you have with the couple, mm -hmm. um, your financial situation, and I don't think it's ever too late to get a gift for a couple. No, um, you know, even if it's eight months later, a year and a half later, they're still going to appreciate it. You don't have to say, "Oh, this is a gift for your wedding," but you can say, "You know, I was thinking about you guys." just wanted to get this for you to help support you in this chapter you're in, you know? Yeah. Like, it doesn't have to be, this is for you guys because you just got married. Um, and, like, I'm keeping my registry up, you know? So, even though it's just a cash fund, it doesn't matter. <laughs> Give cat money. <laughs> Give cat money. Yeah, like, <laughs> subscribe to my YouTube channel and just... <laughs> Give cat money. <laughs> play all my videos. That will be, that oh will be more goodness. than enough for me. Um but yeah, so top comment. I think the bride will definitely appreciate the extremely kind gesture. Just a thought, because they were somewhat smaller ticket items. The bride may have purchased them after the wedding herself and not updated the registry, but I think it's totally fine to give your good friend an extra gift if it's within your means. That's a really good point, because you do do that. Oh, they didn't give me this. I'll just get it myself. Mm -hmm. So it would be a great conversation starter, especially if it's somebody maybe, ah, oh, is it weird if I give them too much? Cause they're my friend, but right. we're not that close. Right. I don't know. Right. Like call them up, be like, Hey, I was thinking about you. So I was looking at your registry. Did you buy all of that? Yeah, Cause if not, I'm going to gift yeah. it for you. Like, do you still need it? If so, yeah. I got you covered. That's so nice. Mm -hmm. This is the nicest person ever. <laughs> Best wedding guest of the year goes to OP. <laughs> Better 2022 on Reddit. <laughs> that was their username. Okay. So I think that pretty much covers that. Like, yeah. can't go wrong here. 
No. Unless you're double buying something. But honestly, that's on the couple because you have the opportunity to update your registry. Yeah. Say what has been bought. And if the couple didn't do that, they can't get mad at you for buying them something else. No. I don't know. So, anyway. Go for it. <laughs> Moral of this story. Yeah. We have time for one more story. Okay, bridal babes. When we're talking about post-wedding, this is our last story because this is one of the most prominent things that pops up, most popular topics that pops up when talking about the after wedding. Sounds <laughs> like aftershock. The after wedding. Um, postpartum. Post wedding blues. Pretty much postpartum from your wedding. <laughs> like there's a lot of emotion that can come up. Um, I learned about this when I did musical theater in high school because of post show blues. Um, very similar emotion when you have a lot of pent up uh, expectation and time and energy spent uh, putting into a specific day or series of events and then it's all just over um, it can be shocking it can be depressing it can be it can be a lot of things and so it's important for us to talk about this and maybe even feeling guilty a little selfish because it's like I had such a great time of such a great event why am I like yeah. sad mm -hmm. afterwards? Like I should be grateful. Yeah, right, mm -hmm. right. So it's a little complicated. It and is. I I've had post show blues. I did musicals in high school, but also post concert blues because uh, you just saw your favorite artist of all time. Yeah. And then it's so so much, and then it's over. Yeah. You're like. I need to decompress mm -hmm. after what I just witnessed. Same thing with your wedding. Mm -hmm. Especially with weddings, concerts a day, musicals, a couple months. But a wedding, depending on who you are, is usually <laughs> a year of planning. For me, it was three because of COVID. Huh? So, yeah, it's something I feel like people know about, but don't really, you can't really put your finger on it or explain it correctly until you've had your wedding. 100%. You, you cannot speak on it until you've actually gone through the experience. And that's with a lot of things. Like I used to love giving dating advice to my friends in high school, even though I hadn't actually dated anybody. <laughs> no like it's way. so easy when you haven't actually gone through it. Right. It's so different when you're in those shoes. Yeah. Post title is after wedding anxiety. Just got married, and before the wedding, I very much had the mentality of it will be fine no matter what happens or doesn't quite go to plan. But now thinking about the couple little things that weren't quite how I imagined them, and issues with catering not happening in time, a few menu number issues, and being so pressed for time, it felt like with the planned schedule and photos and not getting to say goodbye to a few close family because they kind of just left. I don't know. I guess I'm just feeling a little sad over it. Like the parts with my partner were lovely, and I'm so happy to be married to them, but IDK, I wanted to elope in the first place anyway. Is this like after wedding anxiety slash sadness normal? Yes. Yeah. I think it is probably the most universally shared um, experience next to bl like blacking out in the middle of the proposal um, that I yeah. hear from <laughs> couples You're right. in their engagement <laughs> wedding season. Um, I don't know if there's any way to avoid this, but there is a way to prep for it. Mm -hmm. um, and that is, I had one DJ say, I make sure my couples do normal things at least once a month every month leading up to their wedding. And then the month before their wedding, I try and make sure that they are focused on them, focused on real life. Because yeah. if you are so every day, every moment is dedicated to the wedding, that separation from that experience is going to be so much more shocking and stressful than it would be if you were incorporating more of your day-to-day -day normal yeah. life into your pre-wedding season as well. Mm -hmm. um, so there's definitely ways to prep, you know, premarital counseling, um, counseling in general, having a good support system around you is super important. Having a partner who is open to these conversations and it isn't going to judge you for the way that you're feeling, very mm -hmm. important. And kind of like we talked about, I'm like, did we talk about this? With the little details. It's really easy to get caught up on these little details. Um, but 
and like not getting the photos that's so painful like it is really hard to move on from those things where it's like I can't get that back like I can't just pretend like I took a picture with this person right if I didn't um so OP just know you're not alone here because everyone had something that they wish they could go back and do it differently or wish they could relive that moment, you know, 10 times over and over and over, but it only gets to happen once. Um, so it is a completely, to answer your last question here, it is a completely normal thing to feel in your wedding season. Yeah. I, after the wedding, I think after our honeymoon, cause we went on the honeymoon right away. So we're finally at home and I finally get to like, really no distraction think about what just happened and how the day went and go over every single detail because I'm a perfectionist (laughs) and it's a problem sometimes but I just had to cry for like 15 minutes and like you said having a supportive partner like (laughs) I was just in bed and I woke up sad and I was like this didn't happen the way and this timing was off and da 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 and Andre was just listening and he let me cry, and then I felt better. Because really, you can't do anything about it. And now you kind of laugh about it, right? So at first, maybe it's a little painful. But then you're like, man, of course we didn't get those pictures. Of course it, <laughs> it rained on our wedding, right? Like, maybe you can laugh a little bit later. But in the moment when you're, th- like, digesting everything and an- overanalyzing what happened, mm-hmm. it it's like, man, this thing that I've dreamt of, this thing for me that I've planned for 10 years on Pinterest because I love weddings and I started when (laughs) I was like 15 on Pinterest. Shout out to Pinterest. (laughs) (laughs) Like just this fantasy that you have in your mind, the real world is never going to add up to this thing that you have in your head because it's not real. So what you're left with is what happened. And Mm -hmm. When we talk about this, it sounds like our wedding sucked. And they didn't. <laughs> it was great. Yeah. For OP, okay, the catering wasn't on time. She didn't get the the uh, pictures outside. She didn't get to say goodbye to the family. That wasn't the whole wedding. Right. But it's just the small little details that you were expecting and that you put this big pressure on yourself to have mm-hmm. that didn't end up happening. That doesn't mean the wedding was bad. No. We had a great time. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it's just the little things that I think eat at you afterwards and you're like, and I also think it's your expectation, but it's also like, did somebody else notice that it wasn't like that? Yeah. And most of the time, no. Most of the time, what you're anxious about, it's what you notice and everybody else is having a great time Mm -hmm. and would have no idea and still has no idea that it was supposed to be a little bit different. Yes. You are the only one that knows all of the details that were supposed to go into that day. And recently I took a wine education course, learned that a third of people do not experience the taste of bitterness. Um, Huh. Yeah, it was crazy. In this class, there were like eight people that just tasted paper. I tasted like there was a Sharpie in my mouth that I couldn't get out. Like (laughs) the worst thing you could possibly imagine. Huh. But there's a third of people who just don't even register bitterness. And so if that's not, like, an example enough of how perception is different for every person on this planet, uh, I don't know what is, but just take that into consideration when you're overanalyzing all these details because no matter what people were thinking and judging and taking in on your wedding day, their perception is completely different than yours. And you can't control how they take it in, mm-hmm. you know? That's just, there's no way to to take control over other people's experience. But if they're having a good time, I think that's what matters most. And, you know, if your dinner was ser- served 15 minutes late, if, you know, I don't know, those little things in the timeline didn't ma- match up, if there's little things like that, like, it's going to be okay at the end yeah. of the day. Like, big picture, you had a wedding. Yeah. Like, that's so exciting. You're married. You're freaking married. And your wedding was awesome. To the person you love. (laughs) Like, more than anybody else, you've decided that that's your person. Like, hallelujah. This Mm -hmm. is a celebration. And it's so easy to get caught up on those little details post-wedding. And I'm not going to tell you, like, just move on and forget it. Because that's not helpful. I still think about it yeah it still comes to mind yeah like, no I still see pictures on Instagram <laughs> where I'm reminded about something and I'm like I'm gonna 
close Instagram for the next hour because yeah. um, this is not healthy for me. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I'm three months out from the wedding. You're a year out, but it happens. Like, you just have to learn how to cope with it. Yeah. <laughs> it sounds so depressing. But, like, yeah. if we can do anything as recently married or about to be married people and shifting societal expectations of the day being a fairy tale that would be I think the most game-changing thing Mm -hmm. and that's what I hope to do here with Bridal Buzz is like have realistic expectations like things will go wrong there's a rainbow side but there's also a poop emoji side to every situation (laughs) that you're gonna encounter here in your wedding planning that's just life and if we can be prepared for it like understand it's coming then maybe it won't be as yeah impactful post-wedding because we knew it was coming Mm -hmm. so anyway top comment says yep my day was great but it didn't go as planned hair and makeup was different than the trials cake leaned to a point that we couldn't cut it with the risk of falling it rained so we had to change our plans for photos blah 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 i was even anxious looking at the pictures the first time but now i can look at them which is such a good Like, I'm so happy that that person was able to move past that anxiety and now have a positive association with those photos. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I I felt the same way getting my photos. It wasn't that I was anxious about what the wedding looked like. It was like, do I look good? Like, these are photos that you have forever. Mm -hmm. And even if you have multiple other weddings (laughs) after your first one... You do you, boo. There will always be your first wedding, right? Mm -hmm. So... Uh, yeah, I was just like, oh my gosh, mm, okay, I look good. Uh, oh yeah, I look fine. And it's not that I didn't trust my photographer. Oh yeah, she's was, a hottie. <laughs> <laughs> you betcha. It's just that, like, it's the one day. It has to be perfect. So much pressure. At least how I felt. It had to be mm-hmm. perfect. Um, and, you know, some people said it was the best wedding they've ever been to. That's and such a good feeling. To be honest, my wedding was pretty standard. Like, it was... <laughs> I had beautiful flowers, my dress was glittery, we had cool suit color, but ceremony, cocktail hour, reception, pretty traditional, after party, pretty normal, I had a photo booth, I don't know, like, (laughs) go off queen, it wasn't wasn't like, wow, over the top, like, animals, and Instagram, moving parts, and yeah, you know, those weddings you see online cost upwards so much money to a million dollars yeah like, literally. to be honest the the big huge ones but yes i i don't know i had a pretty standard wedding and some people some of our guests said it's the best wedding they ever been to and i'm like and here i am crying my bed <laughs> oh, the thing didn't happen at the time and it's like nobody cared about that yeah why am i crying it's it, okay and i learned to cope like you said yeah and it really puts things into perspective And I think it's important, and I'm just going to pour myself a little bit more wine. (laughs) It's important to remember um, in those moments when you're experiencing emotions that you feel like, oh, like this isn't real. I'm overreacting here, blah, blah, blah. Um, Take the word bridezilla out of your brain, burn it, cancel it, go to Twitter or X, whatever it's called now in the scheme of things. Well, it's not even. (laughs) We're not getting into that today. Whatever it is, um, I'm like, where was I going? I got distracted by Elon Musk. <laughs> I'm just thinking about Twitter now. <laughs> Bridezilla is canceled. Yeah, we're canceling Bridezilla. We're we're over it. We are debunking, demything, mythical, myth busting, myth busting <laughs> the term Bridezilla because you're allowed to have feelings, you're allowed to have opinions, and you're allowed to be like outspoken about that because you're spending thousands of dollars. Um, on one day that you will never get back in your life. So go off, have your opinion, stand by it, um, and don't be afraid that you're going to come off as a, quote, bridezilla, because I freaking hate that word. And I hate that it's just so commonly thrown around in the wedding industry. Um, For women having opinions and wanting what they want. Yes. So we're crushing the patriarchy one word at a time. And bridezilla is that word right now. So, And as a formal bridal stylist, I have actually never met a bridezilla. I've worked with whew, hundreds, maybe even a thousand people. And I have never met a bridezilla. I've met a momzilla, and I've met a 
best friend Zilla, and I've met a, a <laughs> maid of honor Zilla and a sister Zilla. The Zillas are out like a safari. But it's never the bride. <laughs> it is always these people who put their wants, it's not their wedding, but they put their wants on the bride yeah. or expectations, and that creates pressure. So when the pressure is too much, all of a sudden you seem like a bridezilla because you're freaking out. Yeah. And that's not fair. No. <laughs> and it's like, not, yeah, you're like holding in all this emotion and then it's coming out and it's like, I've been trying not to be a bridezilla this whole time and now you're calling me a bridezilla because I'm actually letting out what I've been holding in and it's like, yeah. ah. And because people don't You can't listen. win. You can't no. win. And you might say something a hundred times throughout this process and then finally when people fight you on it or something or no, we don't, you don't do that or I, I don't know what your situation is, but it's going to come out at some point and then that's the one where they put the camera in your mm -hmm. face and it's like, you're a bridezilla. Mm -hmm. It's like, really? That's not fair. Yeah. So there's a lot that can come up post wedding and like to wrap up this episode, you know, from where do I go right after my ceremony or my reception's over? Like, do I just get in the getaway car and go away to how do I cope six months out still feeling a certain way, you know? So bridal babes, I hope wherever you are in your wedding planning journey, your wedding season, you learned something today. Do you want a splash of wine? Yeah. A little cheersy. Cheers little cheersy, weirsy. And remember, you don't have to send thank you cards. <laughs> From Elise to you. D-I-F-Y. <laughs> I'm giving you permission yeah. to not carry on a tradition that you don't want to spend money on. <laughs> Honestly, like... And if you want to get those thank yous out there, there's a way to do it. Yeah, yeah for sure. Just from, not from me. To you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, couldn't be me, but I respect you for it. <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay. Well, that wraps it up for today, Bridal Babes. I hope you just soaked it up, enjoyed your time with us. We sure enjoyed our time with you. Don't forget the buzz doesn't stop here. We are everywhere online. You can also find Elise online. Um, not only is she an amazing person, but she also does wedding business consulting. So if you're a vendor out there looking for extra assistance, finding your way, yeah, you go Magdalia, to Magdalia Consulting. Consulting. <laughs> yes. So make sure you find Bridal Buzz, Elise, Magdalia Consulting online. And with that, we'll see you next time. Cheers. Bye. <laughs>